A last-minute trip with his grandfather changes the life of a young man in ways he could only imagine. Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier and today we're covering the 2016 comedy Dirty Grandpa. Before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the breakdown. And, as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Alright, let's get into it. We're introduced to Jason and his grandfather through a slideshow of throwback pictures of the two of them in happier times. From the pictures, it's evident that Jason was an ambitious young man and a football jock. Fast forward a few years later, Jason has followed in his father's footsteps and is a corporate lawyer at his firm. It's the day of his grandmother's funeral. Friends and family have joined them in mourning their loss. Jason's keeping his father and friends entertained when he excuses himself to take a moment to reflect beside his grandmother's coffin. He runs into his cousin, Nick. Nick is completely intoxicated and high on God knows what. Not only does Nick lack social etiquette, but he also fails to read the room and starts to talk to Jason about their grandmother. Nick believes their deceased grandmother was murdered. Jason tries to make him understand that she had cancer for about 10 years. A small tiff ensues when Nick pours alcohol on their grandmother's coffin. To add insult to post-mortem injury, Nick is also smoking an e-cigarette laced with green. He tricks Jason into giving him an embrace and blows smoke in his face in an attempt to get him high. Jason's grandfather, Richard Kelly, joins the funeral service at the church. During the service, Jason's overbearing fiancée, Meredith, whose life revolves around her big day, is more concerned with the color of the tie that Jason will wear to their rehearsal brunch. Dickie notices this, and after the funeral, he asks his son David to allow Jason to be the one to drive him down to Florida as a custom he had with their grandmother. David's skeptical about the trip and wonders why Nick can't drive Dickie instead. Jason's also against the trip because of his wedding and work obligations. He tries to speak up for himself, but his father interrupts him. In Dickie's defense, he states that he hasn't spent quality time with Jason. He plays the deceased grandmother card, hinting that it was her dying wish. After much persuasion, Jason agrees to drive his grandfather down to Florida. While leaving to go pick him up, Meredith is going on and on about the planning of the wedding. She's also frustrated that the trip is inconveniencing her micro-planning. Jason arrives at his grandfather's house, where he finds himself giving himself a hand. Jason is mortified and confused. Dickie offers him a drink for breakfast, his first attempt to get Jason to rebel. He also suggests an alternative route to the one David has recommended that they use. Dickie casually thanks Jason for agreeing to drive him since the state has revoked his driver's license because of cataracts. Still in a daze about his grandfather's strange behavior, they set out on the road for their trip, drinks at the ready. While in transit, Jason and Dickie stop over at a diner for breakfast. Jason is busy on his phone trying to finish some work. Dickie's not one to hold his tongue. He expresses his discontent at Jason's career choice. He goes a step further to remind Jason of the time he had dreams of pursuing a photography career and traveling the world. Jason goes to great lengths to explain the perks of his career to his grandfather, who really couldn't care less. Dickie decides to head out to the liquor store, and it's here that we're introduced to Shadaya, Jason's former lab partner in their freshman year of photography classes. She notices Jason and tells her friends about him. She then approaches him to say hi, but he's too engrossed in his work, and he assumes that she's a waitress. Taking advantage of the fact that Jason is not paying much attention, Shadaya quickly grabs the money and pays for the bill on their table. She and her friends dash out of the restaurant, but it's not long before Jason figures out that he's been played. He runs to the parking lot and is stunned to find that the trickster is none other than his former classmate, Shadaya. Dickie finds them catching up and charms his way with the ladies under the guise that he's a college professor. Dickie immediately hits it off with Lenore, who's coincidentally interested in a fling with a college professor. Shadaya and her friends leave the diner and Jason and Dickie continue on with their plans. Jason and his grandfather arrive at the golf course to unwind and take it easy. Not one to miss out on some gorgeous broads, Dickie notices two ladies who are playing golf at a beginner level. He uses the electric golf cart to cross over the field to be closer to the ladies. Dickie lies that he's a retired astronaut and licensed golf professional willing to help them learn a trick or two about the game. 
They're surprised when Jason refers to Dickie as Grandpa. To save face, he tells the lady that Jason is a special child that he and his family have been caring for. All right, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. When Dickie heads to their vehicle to get them a refill, Jason tells them the truth about his career and that his grandfather just lost his wife. This creeps them out, and they make a run for it. Jason and his grandfather get into a bone of contention. Jason can't grasp how Dickie, who just lost his wife, is already hitting on several women, college girls at that, and drinking himself stupid. Dickie finally admits to Jason that after 15 long years, he finally has a desire and the opportunity to dance in the sheets. Dickie proceeds to roast him for being a Bach clocker and once again reminds Jason about his passion to be a photographer and travel the world. As they're playing golf, Dickie hears a message pop up on Jason's phone. He grabs it and finds that Lenore has sent a photo of herself in her birthday suit dedicated to Dickie. The invitation is to a party at Daytona Beach. Dickie quickly hotwires the golf car after Jason refuses to give him the keys and they set out to begin their trip to Daytona. While in the heat of traffic at Daytona Beach, Jason receives a call from his domineering fiance, Meredith. She's seeking Jason's feedback on having their wedding announcement posted on a popular website. Meredith is having none of it while Dickie keeps disrupting the phone call. She's shocked to find out that Jason is at Daytona Beach. Dickie grabs Jason's phone and texts Shadaya and friends asking them to meet up at the beach. Before they head out, Jason and Dickie pass by a shop to buy some beachwear. Jason's panicking because of the derailed plans. Once again, his impatience gets to him and he prods his grandfather about the trip. Dickie finally admits that he was in the army and missed out on David's entire childhood. They're looking for the store owner when a stranger breaks into the shop claiming to be a robber. It turns out to be Tan Pam, a deranged part store owner, part drug dealer. Jason and Dickie arrive at the beach where they meet Shadaya and her posse. Sparks are flying between Jason and Shadaya as they catch up on old times. Bra and Cody join them and invite them to a pool party next to their hotel. Jason admits that he's never gone for a spring break since at the time he was focused on law school. Dickie's able to talk Jason into going for the pool party. While at the party, Dickie's up to no good. In a clandestine move, he walks away with two cups of beer and spikes one with Xanax with the intention of getting back at Bra. They all get into a chugging contest, and in a twisted turn of events, Jason ends up drinking the spiked beer. Things quickly go south, and Jason, the party pooper, is now very high on Xanax, and is now the life of the party, for a change. He's dressed provocatively in nothing but a fanny pack. Jason's having a ball, and he later runs into Tan Pam. Jason grabs an e-cigarette from Tan Pam, thinking it's jazz cabbage. Unknown to him, the cigarette is laced with crack. Things unravel even faster when Dickie and Shadaya are unable to get to Jason in time. A skunk drunk Jason leaves the party and makes off with a speed bike. After a night of debauchery, Jason wakes up on the beach to over a dozen missed calls from, you guessed it, Meredith. She's livid that Jason has been unreachable and they've missed their deadline to have the wedding announced on the website as planned. She demands that Jason switch to a video call, and as if that's not enough, Jason's parents, the officiant of the wedding, and Nick join in on a call. Jason is beyond mortified. Just when the situation is starting to seem manageable, a young kid passes by and is completely fascinated by Jason's provocative fanny pack. One mistaken encounter and Jason is arrested thereafter and locked in a cell. Jason tries to negotiate for his phone so that he can place a call, but the officers, filled with mockery, are not having it. Luckily, Dickie swoops in in the nick of time and posts bail for Jason. They drive out to visit Dickie's longtime friend, Stinky, who's in a nursing home. Dickie tries to talk him into running away from the home, but Stinky rejects the idea. He wants to be at peace and keeps playing bingo. This inspires Dickie, who realizes that life is too short and very fleeting. He talks Jason into going back to Daytona Beach one last time so that he can finally glaze Lenore's donut. Jason agrees to help his grandfather one last time and they set out to the beach for the flex off party. They meet Shadaya and Lenore who convince them to go on stage for a flex off with Bra and Cody. 
Several ungraceful attempts later, Jason and his grandfather come up with the idea to bust a move that they did together when he was younger. They steal the show, and Tan Pam encourages the crowd to take out their phones and snap pictures for the internet. This sends Jason into panic mode, and he immediately leaves the stage, worried that if the pictures surface, he may lose his job. Dickie comes up with a plan to use the confetti sprayer to hit Bra with a beer can. He shoots Bra, causing him to be hospitalized. This buys them time to use Bra's room for the night. Jason and Dickie are looking dapper as they arrive at the nightclub. They find the scene popping and quickly get to drinking and getting their groove on. As they're having a ball, Dickie notices a group of guys looking to pick a fight with Bradley for being effeminate. Dickie stops the fight and challenges the gang to a fight in the parking lot. What's a party without a parking lot fight, right? Jason's worried that they have no crew and they might sorely lose. Dickie manages to fight them all off after Jason takes the first punch. The next day, Shadaya takes Jason to a site where she's joined a group who are protesting the illegal cutting down of trees to make way for a mall. She also tells Jason that she's heading out for a year-long trip to document the effects of climate change on the ocean. Their hangout is cut short when Shadaya receives an emergency call from Bradley, who's worried that Dickie and Lenore have been kidnapped. They set out to look for them. To their surprise, they bust in on a get-together between Dickie and the gang he fought at the parking lot. They take the party to a karaoke bar. Jason and Shadaya end up singing the song, which he and his fiance will be singing to their guests. Unknown to Jason, Bra and Cody have planted a bag of reefer inside Dickie's jacket to get back at him. Jason also admits to his grandfather that he wants to call the wedding off and tell Shadaya the truth about himself. Jason's determined to talk to Shadaya, and he runs up to the room where the party is. But they're too late. Bra uncovers the truth about Jason and Dickie in front of everyone. He reveals that Dickie was a colonel in the army and that Jason is a lawyer set to wed Meredith the next weekend. The police officers, having received a tip-off from Bra, bust in on the party and find the reefer in Jason's possession. While searching his jacket pockets, Jason finds out that Dickie's license was never suspended and he's been living a lie. He's arrested for a second time and is again bailed out by his grandfather. Jason's beyond livid, understandably, and expresses utter disappointment. They get into a heated exchange. Dickie admits to going through all this trouble to stop Jason from marrying Meredith. However, Jason revokes his grandfather's invitation to the wedding. Jason travels back to Atlanta where he lives with Meredith. She's less than pleased to see him and promptly resumes the wedding plans. One night, as Jason is watching television and Meredith is obsessing over her wedding decor, Jason receives a package from his grandfather. It contains the crochet frame from Dickie's friend, Sandy, an amazing camera, and a note. In the accompanying note, Dickie hopes that Jason will change his mind and join Shadaya on the road. The day of the rehearsal brunch is finally here. Meredith and Jason are surrounded by friends and family. The soon-to-be newlyweds are presenting a song to tell their love story when things take a turn for the worst. Dickie's hired a hacker to gain access into the computer projecting Jason and Meredith's photos. Meredith is too in the zone performing their special ballad to realize that the slideshow behind her is now displaying embarrassing pictures of Jason and Dickie's escapades at Daytona Beach. Jason has a change of heart and tells Meredith that he can't marry her. He leaves the brunch and finds his grandfather waiting for him outside. Dickie devised a plan B to have Tan Pam kidnap Shadaya. He advises Jason that he has less than four hours to get to Shadaya and give their love one last shot. They all quickly board the ice cream truck that Tan Pam has chosen for their love heist. David tries to stop them from leaving and he gives Jason an ultimatum. Either stay or lose his job. Tan Pam ends up tasing David. Feeling guilty, Jason convinces the rest of the squad that they should carry David. The squad runs into some traffic and Dickie decides to take the wheel. David is suspicious of his father's driving skills. Dickie ends up admitting that he was in the special forces when he was in the army. They finally catch up to Shadaya's bus and nearly get into a head-on collision in a crazy attempt to stop them from continuing with the trip. Amidst the chaos and police officers, Jason is able to talk to Meredith and he confesses his love for her. He tries to convince her to stay, but she has her mind set on the trip. Jason decides to join her for the trip instead. The police officers try to arrest Jason, but David intervenes in the nick of time. Tan Pam also talks the police out of arresting Jason, and he steals the keys to the police squad car. David drives Dickie to a new nursing home, and they're able to reconnect and agree to work on their relationship. To Dickie's surprise, he finds Lenore, the gift that keeps on giving, waiting for him in his room. 
This is the moment that they've been waiting for. With no time to waste, they get to some bedroom rodeo. A few years later, Lenore and Dickie are now parents to a newborn son and have brought him for his baptism. They chose Shadiah and Jason to be his godparents. David has no regrets. He believes this is a chance to get his parenting right. I think this is the only movie where the guy that walks out on a wedding and leaves the bride at the altar is kind of the good guy. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.